Hello and welcome back to IXL Tutorials. This is Mr. Duffick and today we are doing IXL N6 which is properties of parallelograms. Okay, so all you need to know about parallelograms for this is number one, the opposite lines of the quadrilateral or the shape with four sides are going to be congruent here. So this side is going to be the same length as this side and they're going to be parallel. And then the same thing for this pair of sides right here, right? And that goes with the angles. These two angles, the opposite angles are going to be the same, and these opposite angles are going to be the same as well. And so you're just going to go through a series of problems where they ask you to identify some of the angles and some of these side lengths, and sometimes with variables, just like in this problem in front of us. So uh, what we see here is they give us the uh, opposite sides here. They only give us one here, so we're, we're not going to really touch that. We're going to touch the two opposite sides where they actually give us variables here to work with. And since we know these two sides right here are the same length, right? They're equal. Well, to figure out what S is, we can just set them equal to each other. So we'll do S plus 17 equals 2S. And we'll just combine like terms and such. So subtract S from both sides. So we are left with 17 equals S. Oh, that's it. That's pretty easy. So S is going to be 17. Now, if they wanted us to figure out what um, the actual length of any of the sides would be, we, we would just plug in 17 for S and figure that out. But they just want S. They don't want any of that stuff. So we're just going to plug in 17. OK, uh, find T. You're going to do the same thing here. 6T equals T plus 50. And then just solve for T. Not a big deal there. Okay, find the value uh, the value of x in the parallelogram. Uh, same exact thing. I guess I can do this one real quick. Okay, new. Here we go. Okay. So again, they give us the opposite sides here. They, they don't give us these in terms of variables. So we're going to stick with these. So we're just going to go 10x equals 9x plus 2. Combine like terms, so I'm going to get rid of the 9x from this side, send it over to this side. And we have 10x minus 9x, which is just x. And all we have left is 2, so x equals 2. OK, find the value w. OK, just going to set those two equal to each other, nothing new. I'm going to jump a level. Find fi. OK, so this is uh, what I was saying earlier. Sometimes they'll just have you find the missing variable like x or w, and sometimes they'll want you to find the length. So just pay attention to see what they're asking for. Um, this time they're asking for the length of fi. So we're going to find w, but then we're going to just plug that w in at the end and get the actual length. So same deal. We're going to go 10w, uh, not equals, 10w minus 22 equals 7w minus 10. Okay, so now we are going to combine like terms. I'm going to subtract the 7w from this side, send it over to this side, and then I'm going to add the 22 on both sides here. So those cancel out and those cancel out. So we are left with 7, uh, 10 minus 7w is going to be uh, 3w, and that's going to be equal to negative 10 plus 22, or just 22 minus 10, is positive 12, so 12. And to get w by itself, we will divide both sides by 3. So we have w equals 12 divided by 3 is 4. OK, but again, they don't want w. They want the length of fi, right? So all we're going to do is we're going to plug this 4 into w. So this is going to be 7 times 4 minus 10. 7 times 4 is going to be 28 minus 10, which is going to be 18. So fi is going to be 18, meaning the other side is going to be 18 too, by the way. OK. Oh, we have an angle one here. OK. Well, as I said earlier, uh, the angles are the same way. The opposite angles are going to equal, uh, e equal each other. C and E are going to equal each other. So now we just got to find what f is going to be in this rhombus. So what's important to note here for this rhombus, remember a rhombus is a shape that has 
four equal sides, right? It's like a square, except it doesn't necessarily have 90 degree angles here. Okay. So. So we know that uh, two adjacent angles are going to have to add up to 180 degrees. You can kind of see it. We have an angle that is larger than 90 here, and then an angle that is smaller than 90. But either way, those two are going to have to add up to 180, or these two are going to have to add up to 180, um, et cetera, et cetera. So that means for this problem, we can't set these equal to each other. We have to do 3p minus 90. Uh, plus 2p minus 70 equals 180. We can't set them equal to each other because they don't equal the same thing. You know, very clearly not, right? This is pretty large and this one's pretty small. But we know when you add them up, they have to be 180 degrees, just like uh, you add these up and this 180 and then everything equals 360. So we'll combine all the like terms. 3p plus 2p is going to be 5p. And then negative 90 minus 70 is going to be minus 160 equals 180. Okay, we'll add 160 to both sides. So we have 5p equals 340. And then we just divide both sides by 5. And 340 divided by 5 going to be 68. Okay. And wants to know what angle F is though. And F is going to be equal to D. So we're going to plug 68 in for P when it comes to 3P minus 90. So 3 times 68 minus 90 like that. And so that 3 times 68 is going to be 204. And then minus 90 is going to be 114, which looks pretty accurate, right? This angle being about 114 degrees, considering a 90 degree angle is a right angle right there. So good, 114, and there we go. Okay, find angle J and parallelogram this. They give us these two opposite angles uh, with, you know, in variable form, but we know they equal each other. So what we're going to do first is we are going to solve for y and figure out what the actual degree value of these angles are. And then since we know j and h have to be the same, uh, we will use our uh, subtraction and deductive reasoning to figure out what only j or h is going to be from there because all four have to add up to 360. Okay, so first thing is first, let's do 3y minus 66 and set that equal to 2y minus 2. Uh, we'll combine like terms, minus 2y minus 2y, and then I'll do plus 66 and plus 66. Okay, so 3y minus 2y is y, which equals negative 2 plus 66 is 64. So y is 64. Now I'm just going to plug it into one of them. doesn't matter which. I'll do the easy one up here, 2y minus 2. So it'll be 2 times 64 minus 2, which is going to equal 126. Okay, meaning this is 126, and of course this is going to be 126, right? Because they both have to be equal. And now, since both of these have to be equal, I'll do like x and x. Uh, then we can just set up an algebraic equation to figure out what just one of the x's is going to be after we add all of them up to equal 360. So we'll do 126 plus x plus 126 plus x equals 360. Okay. Combine like terms, 126 plus 126 is 252 plus 2x equals 360. Okay, and then we're going to subtract the 
52 from both sides. And that's going to be 2x equals 108. And then we have to divide the two both sides to get x by itself. So we have half of 108 is going to be 54. All right, so x is going to be 54, meaning each one of these angles is going to be 54 degrees. And that means j is going to be 54 degrees. Go back here, 54. OK. Um, let's see, find CD and the rectangle ABCD. OK, so same problem we just did. We're going to set these equal to each other, solve for w, figure out what these uh, lengths are. And then you're going to um, just see what CD is. And what else? IJ rectangle. Yep, same thing. Set them equal to each other and then plug it back in for IJ. Uh, this is a rhombus, so all four sides are going to be equal. These two are going to be the same. These two are going to be the same. Find B and A. So, okay, so B and A are going to be the um, opposite things, right? This angle plus this angle is going to be 180 degrees. So just like the problem we did before, and then you're going to solve for P and then plug P into both of those. Okay. And same problem. Okay. So this is where I'll stop the video then. Stay safe, study hard, and I will see you on the next IXL tutorial video. Goodbye.